Hello everyone and welcome back to Planet Zoo. As always, I am Reckless and today we are continuing on, almost a continuation of our last episode. We are adding a new habitat adjacent to our giant otters that we placed in the last episode. If you haven't checked out that episode, go and do so now because we did a little bit of the groundwork for this episode in that episode. So go and check that out if you haven't already. You guys seem to really like what we did with that one, so I appreciate all of you guys for checking out that episode. I'm having a ton of fun with this aquatic DLC. The assets are just fantastic. And today is no exception to that. Today we are adding in the, I'm not sure how to say this, I want to say Cuviers? Cuviers? Subiers? I'm not sure exactly how to say this, but the Dwarf Cayman, yes. We are adding our newest Crocodilian to be added to the game. We are adding it here to our South American uh, little conservation area. I wouldn't necessarily call this a zoo. I think this uh, project is m a little more along the lines of a conservation type project. The habitats and stuff that we've built for the animals here don't really... They're not really zoo-ish, if you know what I mean. If you guys have kept up with this series, uh, we've added all the animals from the South American pack into here, and now we are adding these latest additions from the aquatic pack so it's kind of a continuation when we started this uh, zoo we'll just call it a zoo I mean it is what it is right um, when we started this it was during the South American DLC so we had limited animals at our disposal but we knew that more would be coming as time went on so we kind of left it open for, uh, to add things as we went and I knew that along with South America, we would be getting some form of aquatic or semi-aquatic animals added into the game. I mean, at that point of building this zoo initially, there were hardly any aquatic animals. So everyone knew that they would be coming at some point, right? So we kind of left it open for that. And uh, I'm, I'm so happy that they are finally added to the game. And I gotta say, I'm ha like I said before, is... I'm having a ton of fun with this DLC. The assets are fantastic. And the models, as always, Frontier has knocked it out of the park with these animal uh, models and their animations and everything like that. They really are masters at crafting. Uh, whoever they have over there at their art department does an absolute fantastic job with all these assets. Um, the in-game assets as far as like habitats and stuff like that go i'm not exactly sure what i'm doing wrong with them uh i think it might be that i'm simply not building the uh pools of water deep enough in this episode you'll see i i do create kind of a deep water pool for the crocodilians i i noticed that uh they need to have i believe it's five meters four or five meters of water in order to swim properly which is kind of deep right so i created i went back and i had to add it in after the fact because i noticed it only after i was nearly done with this habitat but i added a little pool for them to swim around in so now they actually swim around properly but i haven't been able to get any of my animals to eat from the uh, underwater feeder yet like it works the fish are coming up from the feeder but none of the animals are actually eating from said feeder yet so if you guys could let me know in the comments what i'm doing wrong with that because the game tells me that it, it's it's deep enough obviously and food is coming out of it but none of the animals are eating from it even when uh even when they're swimming and the food is coming out of the feeder. So I'm not exactly sure uh, what I'm doing wrong there. But if you guys could let me know down in the comments, that'd be much appreciated. So yeah, getting into the animal in this habitat. This is the, again, Cuviers, Suviers, I'm not exactly sure how to say this. The Dwarf Cayman. This is the smallest crocodilian species in the New World. And it is the cutest little guy I've ever seen. The model is fantastic. So they, the adults of this species are Piscovorian, Piscovarian, 
Discovery? <laughs> These pronunciations today, man, they're killing me. They eat mainly fish, but they also eat invertebrates and frogs and stuff like that, right? So they're, they eat the smaller creatures in South American rivers and deltas and stuff like that. They can be found all over South America, or kind of the northern parts of South America. I was very surprised when I was doing my research on this at just how widely spread these guys actually are and they're actually one of the more prolific crocodilian species in all of South America because of their widespread uh, range they're actually listed as least concern on the uh, population index the index that basically says ha how at risk uh, animals are of extinction and whatnot and they're actually of the least concern, so that is a great news for these little crocodilians. Uh, on a side note, this waterfall I'm making here currently in the game, I think this is one of the nicest looking waterfalls I've made to date. Just natural looking. Uh, I know you can't really tell in the uh, time lapse, but at the end of the video I have included uh, some cinematic shots as I always do so check those out and I think you'll agree that it's a, a very natural looking waterfall I tried to make the uh, cascading effect look as natural as possible and I think it turned out great but I want to remind you guys if you are enjoying this video please do hit the like button it helps get the video shared around I appreciate each and every one of you guys watching the videos leaving a like on it giving a comment when you have something to say as well all these things help the metrics of YouTube to help our channel get shared around and whatnot and when you are uh, not the most uh, you know reliable uploader it every little bit helps so I appreciate every time you guys hit that button and do those things for me in saying that as well if you're not a subscriber to the channel please do consider subscribing we are so close to that golden 1000 sub marks uh, and I can just feel it I, I hope in the next couple months or so we'll be able to hit that uh, it's just kind of a mental thing for me, you know? I just want to see that 1,000 mark. I know in the grand scheme of things, it's it's just a drop in the bucket. But for me, to see that we've achieved that 1,000 mark is is means the world to me. So if you haven't subscribed yet, please consider doing so. We have the Planet Zoo content, and we have recently added Ark Survival Evolved to the channel as well. Uh, Ark just provides a little bit of a different flavor to the channel where we can have a little bit more fun uh, you know taming dinosaurs building cool things uh, exploring cool mods and stuff like that it just provides a little bit of survivalist content to the channel as well as just simply you know crafting cool stuff here in Planet Zoo this is something that I wanted to address first and foremost and I hope that you guys have realized by now that Planet Zoo content is not disappearing from the channel. Uh, I, I got a couple messages on our Discord. Join the Discord by the way if you want to keep in touch with us and play games with us. But anyways, I've got a couple messages on our Discord saying like, are you dropping Planet Zoo? Are you stopping making content? Absolutely not, right? I, I have addressed this in a few videos before, but I think people are still a bit confused with that. I'm not replacing Planet Zoo for ARC, okay? You will still get Planet Zoo updates. You will still get all the contents and updates to our Sombat Zoo. We're going to be continuing with the Calgary Zoo project that we are doing. Uh, all the different parks and zoos and projects as well as highlighting any new DLCs and stuff that come out I will most definitely be covering here on the channel. This game is continuing to impress and I can see them going well into the future. It's not going anywhere guys, okay? So you don't need to unsubscribe, you know, we've had a couple people jump ship, you know, they think I, I'm abandoning my roots. It's not what it is. It's just that I need something else for myself to play right and I figure if I'm gonna be playing this game in my free time anyway why not share it with you guys right I have a ton of fun playing Ark I play it with my friends it's always good for a laugh right if you guys don't want to watch that content that's fine I appreciate that right 
if you guys want to leave a like on the video just for the sake of it <laughs> you know I'm not gonna say no but I'm not gonna tell you guys to watch something you don't want to watch but I want you to feel confident in the fact in knowing that your content is not being sacrificed because I'm adding content of a different style to the channel I just wanted to 100% clarify that because I have been getting a lot of questions for it and I just wanted to clear that up but anyways back to the build video here these new underwater plants and everything are everything to me uh, this is one area where the game was severely lacking and obviously they were just kind of holding it off to to implement with this DLC right but in my older videos you'll you'll have seen we use things like the elephant grass and the reeds to really supplement uh, the lack of underwater plants but now that we have these underwater plants it really ties a build together you know like you guys know me I like to go full bore with uh, foliage and everything like that because when you see nature right nature is chaos nature is random and like you go to a place like the the Rio the Rio Pantanal the Pantanal or the Rio Negro or the the Amazon and like there's no bare patches of, of ground you know where where life it hasn't permeated right it's it's wild it's completely overgrown and dense and stuff like that right so i want my builds to be as natural as possible if you guys are looking for uh like huge crazy buildings and like uh, masterful architecture and stuff like that there are far better youtubers suited to that style of building i do my best and like i think i've done some pretty cool builds like our uh our tiger temple in our in our Sombat Zoo, our Himalayan uh, temple and stuff like that. Like I, I can do it, but man, does it take me a while, <laughs> you know? So if you're looking for like these crazy buildings and stuff like that, I, I would definitely refer you to people like Rudy Rankamel, uh, Mike Mike's Sheets and uh, the Lady Designer and all these other U big YouTubers and stuff like that, Pauslay and everything like that. But you know, I do my best as far as that's concerned, but I think my forte is more nature, right? I love making things look just lush and green and wild, right? This is what I love about this game. So I'm super happy that they've added even more assets to allow us to make things look that much more natural and green, if you will. So this is that little pool I was telling you guys about that I, I kind of, as you see, I've had to adjust and readjust all the plants I placed previously and whatnot to accommodate it. But I wanted an area, this is after I noticed that the crocodiles weren't swimming. So uh, yeah, I put in a nice deep little pool. Again, this is part of the challenge of this zoo for me, right? I did a lot of this terraforming and building months and months ago, right? So to now have to come in and build habitats into the existing uh, landscape has been a challenge, but I kind of enjoy it that way, right? Because like, if you were to build a zoo, let's say, in an area such as this, right? You're not just going to clear cut and pave it down and then build it right you're going to build around the natural assets and everything right so it's been a kind of a unique challenge for me on this little mini series we have here to accommodate these animals in the area that we've already built up one of the biggest challenges that you got if you guys have played this game aside from the pathing of course <laughs> one of the biggest challenges you'll know is once you've placed like a lot of assets like grasses or or plants around a water source it's nearly impossible to get the water back in so like let's say in this case right uh, let's say I built up all the plant life and everything around here and then I had to take out the water to re-terraform or like to adjust my terraforming. If I wanted to then add the water back in, you can almost guarantee it's not going to happen. Excuse my phone being on loud there as per usual. Always forget something when recording. Uh, but yeah, 
it would be almost impossible to add the water back in. So it's been a challenge, but I'm really enjoying it. Uh, what I want you guys to do though, is I want you to tell me what is the next animal of the aquatic DLC you would like to see. I hope you guys are enjoying the content so far and kind of our return back to Planet Zoo after a little hiatus. I appreciate you guys sticking with me through all these tough times as well as my less than ideal upload schedule. I'm trying to be better at it for you. So if you guys do like it, please show your support by liking the video. Subscribe if you haven't already. And as always, I'm Reckless. I will see you guys in the next episode. Bye bye